All right, thanks for staying with us, referencing a publication titled Political Financing for Women. Money is essential for the operations of political parties and particularly affects candidates in electoral process or the processes. Now, political financing regulations can um, affect or affect women's access to run as candidates, be elected, campaign, and reach out to the population. Regulations on political funding are used to level the playing field in electoral competition. They can also work to ensure that women are able to compete on a more equal footing with men. Now, this in turn may result in women's increased political participation. Or is there an underlining motive behind these uh, women that are underrepresented, not only in the political sphere, but also in decision making within the private sector, at the village level, at the civil society level? At the local level, men usually dominate positions of power, including as um, religious and traditional rulers, local politicians and village elders. Now, the 2023 elections is fast approaching and we are asking this form cost reduction for women that they have done. Is it a strategy at weakening the political relevance of women or it is actually a good thing or is a plus for them? This is the question for tonight. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Um, so this conversation has been brewing for a while now, you know, and uh, we had to drag in our honorable. <laughs> Maybe she would help us to tell us the experience, right? So, so at face value, when you hear that all oh, women and the disabled, because they categorize us together, so Komini say we don't disable with that. <laughs> <laughs> women and disabled, you know, would pay, you know, only expression of interest form. Expression for, of interest. Fee. Yes, expression of interest fee rather mm. for a position that she is going to be in competition with another person that would pay not just the expression of interest, he will also pay the nomination forms. Mm. So at face value, you go, whoa, yeah, and they're trying to push and support women and make it, make it like truly, truly, we want to fill up that 35% quota. I think that's what we have for women mm. and all of that. But when you now sit down, you know, look like come out of that picture and look at it holistically. Is this really is it a plus or minus? Yes, a good thing for a woman because does it not further cement that patriarchal mindset that feels like a man is more superior? That feels like oh, women are to be you know seen in a certain light when it comes to that they are not they, they are not as strong politically as so they need to also be treated like eggs and all of that. Is that not like more? But let me hear. <laughs> Honorable, and I'll come to you, ladies. No, you're starting with me. I, I wanted to start with you, or no, should I start I with Jennifer? I would like to hear. Okay, Jennifer, let me hear your thoughts. Like We've not heard you in a long time. Um, I think, first of all, here, yeah, I would like to state that that fee is ridiculous. Mm. Because if you're asking a candidate to pay 100 million, 50 million, just to apply for, um, for a seat, where do you expect them to get the money from? Mm. It just begs the question. Like, we know what these people do. We know how some of them make their money. But when you're asking for 100 million naira, that's ridiculous. Mm. And then I've seen people who are trying to rally other people around. Okay, donate here, donate here, do this, do that. And I'm like, mm. you want them to come in fraud? Mm. Because that's the, that's the next thing. And that's how they're going to get their money. But maybe they have big daddies and uncles <laughs> that are backing them. But then when we bring it down to women, I mean, like you said, at face value, it seems like, oh, this is a good thing. They are including women. Um, I mean, we've all been talking about inclusivity for a very yeah. long time, and we all, women want to be part of the change that we're making in our country. We want to set an example. We want people to know that we have a voice. We can also do better. We can play on that field with the men. But at the end of the day, when you look at it, like, I mean, it was the way it was categorized. Mm. <laughs> we men are disabled. It doesn't sound nice. <laughs> it doesn't sound nice. But I mean, I'm not into politics, and I feel like um, the women who are into politics will be the ones to tell us where the shoe oh, is actually yeah. pinching them. Do you understand? Because, I mean, the money, like I said, 
It's a lot. It's a lot. See, it's a lot. honestly, it's, it's, it's a big release. It's a lot of money. So for a firm that I was supposed to probably pay like 10 million, they're asking me to just bring only 1 million. Yeah. It's a huge relief on me. But I'm just thinking, if somebody that says, it's just like, ah, oh, I don't know how to explain it. When, okay, family meetings. I mean, I mean, the evils mm -hmm. you will know now. When you are doing family meetings, it is the person that contributes big. Now you, now you are going to give the floor. Yeah, that's the person they give and, the and, respect. I mean, we all know that Nigerians, there is something with money, and you know. So if because you have you have dropped a huge, respect that is thank you, that yeah. is attached to that. So does not know weaken the respect that a woman will get because somebody will say, "Shut up, there." Uh, after all, not the yeah. one million that you pay. I actually <laughs> think, I actually think there's going to it's. It's going to bring a ripple effect mm. at the end of the day because when men and women are sitting on the table mm. you realize that it is still the men that are calling the shots mm. they are still the one that have the final say they'll still be the ones to make all the decision and all the women need to do is mm. so even yeah you just nod and even when you disagree, it's a problem. Mm. Why? Because I brought in way more, way more money you. than you did. Mm -hmm. So if there's a circle, yeah, if there's a circle and the man is bringing what ninety percent and mm. you're bringing ten percent, please, what exactly are you bringing to the table? Mm. I mean, it seems juicy because. I mean, you pay 100, I paid 2 million. <laughs> <laughs> I can afford it. Do you understand? But, I mean, I think this is something we would have to watch and see. How it plays out. Yeah? Knowing our Nigerian men. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very dicey very. and very difficult one for me to say that um, the motives... It's clean. Mm. It's yeah. Or you're coming from a very genuine, genuine place. place. Thank you. Not my finger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. I totally agree with Jennifer because, like you said, on f at face value, it looks like a good place to start. And I would say it's a good place. At least we've started, right? But it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there because for, we like, like Jennifer had mentioned, women need a voice. Women need to be heard. And if it comes from the place where the impression is that you are doing women a favor and you are tagging them along the same, no disrespect to people who are this. In, in fact, just the, the capping is very unsettling for me mm. because someone who is also disabled, someone who is a woman, does not stop the, their disability or the fact yeah. that they are women mm. does not change what they can their offer, what their capacity or competence mm -hmm. is all about. Mm -hmm. Disability does not in any way oh, impede oh. anybody being able to perform. Yeah. So when you cap it like that, then like Jennifer said, it will be seen from a place that is not genuine, mm. right? I'm looking forward to a time, I mean, it's a start, but I'm looking forward to a time where parties will be able to create equal opportunities for women mm. and men and disabled um, and, uh, people because it is not the fact of gender or their status or their, their condition. condition that limits their capacity to be able to perform. If somebody is able to perform, irrespective, after all, in the time, uh, I think it was uh, Abraham Lincoln or was it Theodore Roosevelt? There was one of the American presidents who was disabled. A lot of people don't remember that he was disabled. All they remember is that he was president. Mm. It didn't impede on his ability to be able to deliver as the president of United States. So if somebody is coming from a perspective where you're saying, okay, let us reduce this because they are women, because they are disabled, then it's very insulting. It's better that you come from the point that says, oh, this money is too much. Hmm. Like Jennifer rightly it said, where are you going to get 100 mills, million from? As yeah. a worker, is as a civil servant or as a what? As a, How are you going to Nigerian get that money? That is trying to perform their civic duties. Exactly. <laughs> so when you look at it and you say, this money cannot, it's not feasible. Can we do something that can that any Nigerian who is hardworking enough, who has what it takes, and who has the backing of his people or his citizens, after all, uh, uh, in, in several countries, they actually get 
people to donate. So yeah. your one one thousand naira or your five five hundred thousand naira can be feasible enough to get me the what ticket. I need mm -hmm. to be able to get the ticket. Mm. Then I would say that we are making headway. Mm. But we'd love to hear from dear honourable mm -hmm. in the house because yes. I'm sure she has a lot to say. It's, it's very <laughs> interesting. I, I deliberately did want to draw start off, him yeah, because I wanted to hear my ladies. <laughs> And in defense to my party mm. as a politician, <laughs> I want to say that for every effort, there's always going to be people that attack it and those that support it. Mm -hmm. When I saw the price, just like, wow, I really for joy. <laughs> you were really so much. <laughs> this is the first. This is the best time to be a woman. But later on that day. Because I saw it on the National Woman Leaders Platform, Better Edu. A very good kudos to her for that initiative. You know, it's interesting when people, when she took that initiative, Daya Israel also took the, liber, uh, the initiative to, to rise for youth reduction in form. And really, I want to say that, in all fairness, because for me, I'm very optimistic mm -hmm. than, than I'm pessimistic. Mm -hmm. And I like to see the good in everybody's deed mm -hmm. than I do see the negativity. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that there are no drawbacks to this. Mm. I want to say well done to EPC. I want to say well done to the party for considering women and giving us a chance. Because what I to see start. is, mm. what I see is they want to make it easier for women entry. Mm. Do you understand that a lot of women are probably dependent on their spouses? and they have lower sources of income, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as such, they decide to reduce the bar so that more women can have access to buy their form mm -hmm. and be able to participate. For me, what I want to address is the cost of form in the first place is quite high. Mm -hmm. I mean, for every Nigerian who just wants to serve, if we're really committed to service in the real sense, without a motive or an agenda to go and mass wealth, mm. why should we raise the bar that high? For me, that's where it starts. But that's not the conversation for today. The conversation is as the price, reducing the price for women, has it favored us in any way or is it not? And I have had to receive the backlash. And that was why I said, Uwa, we need to have this conversation on the show. As though, even though we are allowed to pay for expression of interest and we get the form for free, it is convenient without a doubt. I mean, come on. The nine million naira that I could have paid for form mm. has gone into campaign and trying to get more support for my Absolutely. Gear. One thing people do not understand is the fact that I'm paying for, I'm not paying for form does not mean I'm not spending that money. I'm still there having to, other things yes, that you're, I'm that still having to spend the money to. on a lot of things that mm. are not even, we can get receipt for. Mm. You're going to do consultation, mm. you're going to have meet people. The campaigning is expensive in Nigeria. Mm. You dare not go near politics. What I know today, if I knew it eight, nine months ago when I started, I probably would not have started. Mm. But I'm glad that I didn't know, and I only found out along the way. Yeah. And it was too late for me to say, hey, I'm, no, I'm not no, doing it again. Not <laughs> so now we do what? We stay in this thing, and we run, and we run it through. So for me, I've had people say that. We sat in a meeting, for example, they were trying to streamline us down and say, okay, there's too many of you coming out. Why don't you both all aspirants agree and step down for one another? And they say, you step down after you paid one million. I said, uh-uh. That's the backlash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the drawbacks. I mm. said, excuse me, I am happy to pay 10 million naira. They said, really? I said, yes. I would have paid 10 million naira if that is the price of fee and there was no concessor or no mm. reduction for women because you now think that because i paid one million naira i have I no right have, yeah i don't have the same mm. strength backing to come to the table and mm. negotiate for my inclusion in governance and for me i start to wonder that means we would become weaker and it's and it reduce our negotiating power mm -hmm. when they think that we have paid with token on a fraction of what men pay so therefore you cannot you can't complain if you do not emerge. Mm. I see it as a decoy to just give us a chance, but not in the real sense, give us a fair level playing field. Mm. And yeah. that's what we are clamoring for. Mm. Okay. For me, it's about do not, we are grateful for the chance. Yeah. But then, if it's going to impede on our chances to actually agitate actively mm. and really throw our weights on the field, then we can just keep the. The, the fee, the exactly fee. the way. And let us pay the full price so that we can have equal rights to compete toe to toe with men. Mm. So no man can come and challenge my, my right to say, oh, you pay one million naira, what do you know about? I mean, I pay 10 million naira. 
that is not fair in the mm. real sense mm. because people are beginning to attack the fact that we paid less mm. than the men yeah. and that doesn't give us a chance to adequately compete with men okay. for me that's pretty much it okay so we're going to take a break now i want to open our phone lines stay with us we'll be right back All right, thanks for staying with us. If you just tuned in, it's our Ladies' Night Out, and our focus tonight is form cost reduction. We're asking, is it a plus or a plot to weaken women's political relevance? Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038466. We can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Our phone line is now open. The number to call is 0702500749. I'm already hearing the phone ringing. <laughs> Today, that today, so you know this conversation and eh, me, you know me, I like to find trouble because you know how somebody say because I've seen this happen and it plays out a lot and that's why I hate handouts. Don't give me fish. Show me the way to go and catch the fish because I might catch a fish that is bigger than your own fish. Do you understand? It is the same. Yes. Yes. I can't be better than you. So it's the same principle. Don't act as though you are doing me a favor. Yeah. If I have the capacity and the competence, right, to get this job done, can I please be allowed to get the job done? Yes. You understand? And give me a playing field. So they say, okay, they've reduced costs for women and all of that. Everybody's jubilating. But you then come to the negotiating table where they're having several meetings and consultations. They tell you to step aside. After all, the stake that you put into this matter is not so as high, high as what another man has put in. Mm. So that is where the... You know, the disparity, the, the disparity now comes unfair. It becomes unfair on the woman. Because if you really wanted to start acting like that, you should treat me like I pay 10 million. Yeah. You should treat me like I pay the complete yeah. 100 million. Mm -hmm. whether, whether if, because I did not ask for it, you decided that you wanted to give me a, a, for a hundred million ticket, you said you wanted to pay. Me, you wanted me to pay five million, and I am willing to even deliver at, yes. or, at that rate. Optimal rate. Million. So the fact that I'm paying this amount does not mean that it changes the capacity or the vision and the goal that I have for the dream and the aspiration to serve my people. Mm. Do you get? So that's where I think the problem is. So but let's take a call. Sorry, darling. We have a first caller for today, Solomon from Abuja. Let's hear what you have to say. You're live. Okay. Uh, I see uh, this issue of uh, cost of reduction or a uh, plot or to weaken women's uh, polit uh, political uh, relevance. See, just tell them, tell them when they call for a meeting, just let them understand that the issue is not about reaching the women so that at the end of the day, if they come trying to make uh, anything like that, they should know that from the beginning you have already agreed that yes, this is what we agreed on. But if they refuse to agree on that one, let the women pay exactly the same thing that men pay. Mm. So that at the end of the day, anybody that is trying to do something, we should know because we have already tired of, of all this kind of rubbish that they are doing. The government is not trying. Men, 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 let's try women and see. Because even at home, in the house, women, when anything that women uh, uh, say, or anything that women uh, agree on, that can always work more than what men do. Thank you, so, Solomon. I give you kudos. You are trying. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so. <laughs> I believe the reason why we get some of this favoritism mm. is because of our constant clamor for mm -hmm. women inclusion in governance. Yeah. Mm. I think we women too lay too much emphasis on our gender. Mm. and we push a bit too far. There's a lot of programming going on here. Absolutely. There's a lot I of agree. there's a lot of I agree. premeditation mm. that's that is underlining how we are treated and how we're perceived. You know, it's one thing to even the same thing that we women are dealing with is the same thing that youth are facing. You know, because the youth gets fifty percent reduction because they think that oh you're a young person and that. I believe we should look beyond women, and this is for women. We should stop clamoring for inclusion. We should just continue en masse. The tides are changing. The times are different because a lot of the number of women that are coming to run for office in this 2023 is way higher than what we've had. Mm. And it, sh it simply means there's a major shift and there's a major awareness in the level of 
women responsiveness towards running for office or trying to run for positions beyond the traditional women leader yes. because a lot of the time they consider us for complementary roles mm. they make you commissioner for women affairs yeah. they make you women leaders deputy and de deputy governor and that's pretty much all first ladies and that's pretty much all they see us to be and that's mm. what a lot of us see ourselves to be so you know a pretty face roles. It's it's, mm. it's it's really it's really a major challenge that women themselves needs to start to not clamor for Absolutely. inclusion. Just do your, your thing. Job. Yeah. Just me, push yourself out there, irrespective think, of your gender. Okay. And I think we time, have a call. Yeah. yeah with okay. time, you definitely get there. I was going to say, even the men say, can they really afford the hundred million? Let's take a call somewhere. <laughs> You're live. <laughs> Hi, Samuel. Yeah, a quick point. I will tell you a story about my personal life. And I want the men that are listening to this program to learn from it. A man called me from Ondo State. That was when I was a teenager. He said, if an average Nigerian man can listen to his wife, you will go far. Mm. Do you know the peace I have at home today? I learned that lesson from what that man said. Mm. I listen to your wife. Let me quickly dive into, into this topic. If Nigerian politicians, the ones I call goats, that you ask me to apologize for, we listen to women, in fact, we will go far. You have a senator here. I want to ask a question. Do you know that the countries that are benefiting from democracy today are the women who live are their president? Hmm. That's a food for thought. Thank you, Samuel. <sighs> Thank you so much for weighing him. That. That's, a, that's a that's a serious yeah, Samuel that's is still mean. insisting on this goat matter. <laughs> <laughs> he called he called our leaders goat last week. I don't beg you say they are not goats and sheep. He's still insisting. And i but it, it, so so I am someone is saying on YouTube say nice conversation um today. So it's a nice conversation to have, but I want us to because for Move us we beyond. don't just bring topics so that you we sit down and say, Oh, we're having a great conversation. No. We want people to really think, think. deep. Because yeah. you see this However you look at it, right, you talked about saying, okay, maybe it will ease the burden on the woman and all of that. These men that raised this 50 million, 100 million, can they really, really afford it in the sense of it? Do they really have that money? If they really did, right, we will not have the issues of godfatherism where it means that somebody comes and sponsors you and now expect certain kinds of compensations return. and return. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Even the men do not have it. They have to go and source for those funds. Do you so get? It's not about so it's not about you're a woman. man or a woman. Yeah, yeah, we so. cannot afford it. I was talking to someone, and the person. In fact, that's why I want us to have that conversation on the minimum wage come Thursday. Mm -hmm. The person said to me, said, "Uwa, going by the thirty thousand naira minimum wage that we have today, currently, that if they born you today, Milola, you can't like say <laughs> you born you today today and you start to earn monthly salary. Like you are not waiting till you're eighteen. No? Mm -hmm. You started earning salary from the month you were born." So when you are 85, that's when you can get up to, how much was it? I, I think maybe one ridiculous amount of money. Maybe 30 million naira or something for, the, for your lifetime for your of 85 life. years. So tell me how, do you understand? How do People we really even sustain beyond. these things that, it's a, it's a false, we are not a wealthy country. That you are even putting the form at 100 million or 40 million or 50 million. How many people can really afford this? It is ridiculous. I believe it. But let's take a call, then I'll come okay. back to you, Milola. Hello? Who is that again from Abuja? Solomon. Yes, uh, yes the same Solomon I call back again. Okay. <laughs> uh, you see, let me use the language that I understand. They think they say politicians in Nigeria now, they want they see women as a weaker person. No, no, we say women are the most important thing in politics, mm. just as they are important in the house again. You understand? Because anything that you do at home is the same thing that you will apply outside. You see? So now, the government of Nigeria today, they think that women 
and nothing. Just like our president before, he said that his wife uh, work is in the kitchen as a, as a room. So now, what is that one for? If they allow the women to uh, participate in the politics, at the end of the day, they will see these changes. Meanwhile, they have already failed us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for feeling the pain and the plight of women. You know, okay, I have, have a let me, let comment, me, yeah. um, let me read my comments very quickly. It says, hello, ladies, my dear feminist, Jennifer, <laughs> <laughs> you are not clamoring for equality for women to pay same as men or your feminism, feminism does not extend to this area. So Jennifer, that question is for you. <laughs> you don't want level playing field again. On the matter, women should clamor for level playing field and all, all, on all fronts if they want to be taken seriously politically. Mm -hmm. The discount is attractive, but as we know, a woof, the porch belly. Hey, this is from true. Frank, mm -hmm. which is very true. Mm -hmm. true. And I agree with uh, Honorable Milola because women need to take themselves seriously. You can't continue to have hand-me-down. This looks like another hand-me-down. Mm. And until they see that they have a lot more to offer, that they have brains that we can key into to change situations in the mm. education, in, in healthcare system, in the economy of the... I mean, we have Entire. some women who are representing us on that level, but a lot more women need to rise up to that challenge to begin to push themselves, not as women and people to be pitied or weaker vessel or like you are being handed down a responsibility. You have what it takes. It's not the money. It's not the form that validates you as a person. Mm. You have it on your inside. Let it out. Let it out and let them begin to see, not because you're trying to compete with men, but because you are a human, human being, being who has a civic responsibility to citizens that are looking up to you to deliver, whether you say you are in the Senate, whether you say you're going to represent them in the House of Representatives, whether you want to be the governor of a state or even the president of Nigeria. It's not because you're a woman. It is because you're a human being First. that has what it takes to move and the so I have a comment here I would like to address. It says, Dear Uwa, yes, the fees fixed for the political stages are outrageous, but intentionally fixed to weed out the crowd of contenders. If men have to source funds for this, women have to step up and do the same. It's my, it may not be ideal, but you don't hate the player, you hate the game. Learn the rules and play by it. So mm. we have not said that we do not. What we are saying is that allow us to also be at that position where we can raise the funds. But you see, when you say that the fees are fixed at outrageous prices to weed off, uh, what's it called? So weed off, um, weed out. So does it the still contenders? stop the so, so people who do not have what it takes to, to not gather the money and in still any way and still come and take that position? Of course, so that's what is happening, you know, because it's not in any way within of any contender. You understand? Because for me, I think this fee just continues to bring a lot of people that are really, first of all, very desperate and they can do anything just to get that seat of power because they know by the time they land there, there are opportunities for them. People that have capacity and the heart for service might not want to go into that uh, this thing because it's, you, you are from day one, you've already made it a money game. The foundation is Leadership already wrong. Leadership is not a money game. It's not about money that determines whether you'll be a good leader, that you, you have a lot of money will determine that you're a good leader. No. It is a it's a very wrong foundation that you have set. Well, don't don't get here. don't get very emotional. In in fairness to what that caller said, in the actual fact and in the real sense, a lot of people actually dropped off the mm -hmm. base yeah. because of the cost. Mm -hmm. For example, there were five of us from my local government. We dropped down to three. And I said to them, even if it was set at ten million, I would still have been able to show that. I'm, I'm serious about the game because trust me, a lot of people are actually not serious about running. But Milola, seriousness should, should not always translate to, to the money value you pay Can Do you understand? Know, go ahead yeah i feel i feel like every time we're getting close to election period people tend to forget the past events that have mm. happened now look at the past governance and those who have actually shown interest in the presidency 
we've seen how they govern us in the past. And, and they now want to be And presidents. now they want to. So they, yes, they have access to the 100 million. But we know what you've done before. We know that you cannot deliver. And it's as simple as that. I get that, oh, you're putting the money up here so you don't have a lot of contenders. But at the same time, people who actually have the capability to take us to where we want to go to cannot participate. Because even the if they want to raise, even if they want to come from a place of standard, it's not the money. Thank that you. Why not raise the bar to okay, intellectual standards? Yeah. Intellectual standards. Capacity. To capacities that people can see. Questions. There's some people who come out and say they want to be present. They you can't they even just being able to communicate why. is so, a problem. They have no agenda that can move the people forward. So what if you bring people in the room and say, okay, what is your track record? Where are the businesses? Because Nigeria is a business. Yeah. Where are the businesses that you have run successfully? So you then have people like the Tony Lumelus and all of these people that are running successful businesses to say, okay, you know what? I can then step up. It's not a money game. Governance has never been and will never be about money. So you cannot tell me that raising the money to 100 million means that you're winning up uh, whatever. I, mean, I think our priorities people. are Let a me, bit misplaced I have in, a, in I have that a regard. I have a from Ade. Yeah. And he says, good evening, ladies. In my, in my opinion, any political party that gives a woman a vice presidential position is most likely to win the race. In Nigeria, women are more populated than men. Is a step forward for possible women president in the future. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ade, for throwing that in. But most times, they really do not consider us for the role of a president. Le they they can vice president. It's always vice. Yeah. It's always deputy. <laughs> even, even with the vice. Even vice even president, with the they vice can't and the deputy. Well, not you the actually deputy have had. a voice. No. Are you just, are you're just, just a figurehead. They're just a figurehead. They're just a spare. Yeah. Even for the man, there's usually a spare in mm -hmm. the event that anything happens to, to the, the president, president or to the, or the governor. governor. That's when you're supposed to step in. If there's nothing wrong with the number one citizen, you really are just so they say, <laughs> let's Jennifer, let's get coming. It says Ade says again, Ade is from the UK. It says women should be given a free ticket, but start as a running mate for the political party. Hmm. Hmm. Ade, so you see this thing where they always they, everybody just feel, oh, okay, put a woman as a running mate, put a woman as a running mate. As a we should, yeah, we, we should stop looking at those. So women That's do, why I said, there's a lot of yes, so women do have the capacity to be on the driver's seat, right? Can we stop limiting women to just, oh, because you see, when you put a woman as a running mate, she's just a figurehead. I mean, we've seen countless deputy governors in Lagos states. Uh, as women yeah. Yeah. what really what really is their political relevance what is their relevance or what impact did they really have on the actual governance that happened in the state we know now we can't be deceiving ourselves these well, women if, always if act as get, invisible supporting roles if we want to get Basically, a nobody's seen you they are going to look at us and say oh they're feminists oh they are clamoring for women in governance it would be nice if you probably bring a male on the show and let's hear a male's perspective on this conversation because trust me we sound like we're just agitating yeah. for women and we no, need more basically. women but really it's not about that it's about trying to identify some of the issues here and see how we can seal the balance and ensure fair system equal level playing field where we do not get attacked because we did not ask for a free nomination mm. fee we were given that, and at the end of the day, that privilege we got seemed to be used against, against us. Yes. And okay. that's really, for me, the major crux of this So I want to address Let's something yeah, based on the comment um, Norma took. Um, so for me, yeah, even as a woman, I don't think I, I would just give you a free pass just because you're a woman. Honestly, you also need to put in the work. Of course. I'm not going to vote for you if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. If you cannot deliver, cannot as a woman, you. as a man, you should not be there in the first place. It's as simple as that. And I feel like that's what we need to start looking at. Exactly. I feel like I people have not suffered enough. Mm. When it gets to election period, they seem to forget mm. that they, they suffered. Oh, the big you just suffered last mm. month. Oh. Mm. So why are you not looking for change? Why are you not looking for something the better? Place. For competence. The soap is Jennifer, let's take your comment. So I have a comment here. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters <laughs> of ways. Concerning two out of the four topics discussed, we cannot blame um, Khan from disassociating themselves from that fake pastor who is demanding 310,000 from people to see heaven. It is obvious that the pastor is fake and is karma. I am sure that the pastor has not seen heaven before. <laughs> My dear beautiful sister Jennifer, 
<laughs> just made a point that the money asked for concerning the form for an office in government is ridiculous and on the high side. If you pay that amount and no guarantee to be elected into that office, the money is gone and you can never retrieve it. Sister Jennifer, you're welcome back. You're looking so pretty and beautiful. Thank you. My name is Daniel Ilo, Waze regular fan. Thank you, Thank Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. So Thank we're you. discussing this topic today possibly because of um, a part of the cost of form was waived. Mm -hmm. Should this waiver wasn't given, okay, I don't understand this in English, our women would have complained that they were marked out. I think our women need to learn how to take challenges by the horn and develop negotiation power. Regards from Lawrence Lagos. We will not have felt bad, but we let's take. Yes, oh. we would have paid for the form, nee. Because we are serious. Like uh -uh. That. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So let me take this one. It says, "Let's get it straight. The women have been sidelined and humiliated politically a long time by the men. How do you expect a woman to buy a form worth hundred million, fifty million, alongside the men folk? This is madness and wickedness. The women have." the highest votes in Nigeria. It's high time that the women resist by protesting nationwide or better stop voting. I weep for the Niger woman. This is Bobby Kennedy from Jalingo in All right, State. so we have to run. Thank you so much, ladies. We had a fantastic conversation. We hope to bring, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll bring it back. Now, before we go to ensure you follow us, on Wish Your Africa on Instagram and Twitter at Wish Your Africa One. You can drop your comment. More importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Um, there's need to be a, there needs to be a fundamental shift in the way societies view women in government, uh, one that does not see them as a mere seat feelers or stats on a chat. They must be viewed as a vital contributing factor to the betterment of the world. That's as simple as it gets. We'll see you guys live at 8 p.m. tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.